What up guys, welcome back to the channel. So look, today I wanna to share with you some reverb settings that I use when it comes to uh, how I process my reverb. We're gonna combine some EQ and a little bit of sample rate reduction and saturation just to give the reverb a certain sound using the old trusty D-verb. You know, all stop plugins, you know I'm the king of stop plugins. I'm a firm believer that your DAW, it doesn't matter what DAW you're using, uh, they come with everything that you need really to make a mix sound great. You don't need a whole lot of tools, you just need the know-how. Uh, so I'm gonna play the beat for you guys. I'm not quite finished with the beat, I'm still working on it, but I'm gonna play it for you and then I'm gonna show you guys the settings that I'm using on, and I'm only using this, this reverb on one sound in this mix, but I'm gonna show you guys the settings that I'm using. you're hearing that sound is just a, a guitar little loop that I had and I just reversed it but I'm gonna play it for you without the reverb and then I'm gonna play it for you with it all right this is with it So with the reverb, you can just hear the space that it adds and just makes the, the guitar sound that much bigger. So I'm going to play the just the reverb for you guys so you can hear just what the reverb is doing or what the reverb sounds like. It's just this huge sound and space, but let me go ahead and show you guys what I'm doing on the process. And so the first thing we got is EQ. We got the old trusty D-verb and we got the lo-fi plugin. All these are just stock plugins, like I said. First thing I'm doing is I'm EQing going into the reverb. I got the high filter at 1.29, high pass filter at 1.29, and I'm actually boosting 9 dB at 1.80. Uh, let let me let you hear. I'm a I'm a bypass the the lo-fi plugin just so you can hear what the EQ is doing. What you're about to hear is just the reverb, no direct sound, just the reverb by itself. All right, now this is with the EQ. So you could just hear how that EQ got rid of all of the junk in the reverb, going into the reverb. Now let's go on to the reverb. The reverb, I got a low pass filter on at 7.58 kilohertz, and I got a high filter cut at 8.27 kilohertz. And all it did or all it does for me is it smooths out the reverb and gets rid of that, the digitalness of the reverb, I guess you could say. I always like to uh, use a high filter cut and a low pass filter on my reverbs in D-verb. Uh, how I said it depends on the sound and it depends on what I want the space to sound like. All right, last thing I'm doing, I got the lo-fi plugin. This is probably one of my favorite plugins ever. I use it on everything from vocals to drums to keyboards to effects ends, everything. It's, it's just a really dope plugin. Uh, first thing I'm doing is I took the sample rate down to 12,000 hertz. And I got this uh, from Drake's Engineer 40. He actually talked about, I can't remember if it was a video or article I read, but he talked about how he would use the sample rate reduction as a low pass filter opposed to using a low pass filter. And it, it just sounds different. I'm telling you guys, it sounds different. So I took that down to 12,000 hertz and I'm actually adding some saturation, uh, 6.7. Now that's gonna depend on the sound and uh, the, you know how you want your reverb to sound. You can take it too far where it's gonna sound a little bit distorted, but let me play the reverb for you uh, with it with the uh, lo-fi and then I'm gonna play it without it. And this is without it. So 
So if you listen to it with the lo-fi plug-in, you can hear how the reverb sits back a little bit and it just sounds like it's more together. And that's what the saturation does. I like to think of saturation as glue. Compressors are considered to be glue as well, but saturation, it does something to the signal. It makes it feel a little bit more warmer. And you could tweak this, like you don't have to necessarily, uh, these settings are not set in stone. Reverb, you know, while it plays an important role, uh, it's, it's understanding how to tweak it so it doesn't cloud up your mix or make your mix muddy. I hear it so often like, People, I can tell they don't really understand how to tweak their reverbs to get them to sound like what they're hearing in these songs. They think people are just slapping on reverb and it just sounds good. No, you gotta do some tweaking to get it to sound like what you're hearing on these records, all right? I really hope this was helpful to some of you guys. If it was, don't forget to hit that thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed to the channel yet, I would love for you to subscribe to it and I'll catch you guys on the next one.